What's up everybody, I'm Jasprit Singh and now with growing worries about the economy slowing down and with worries about the stock market and the health of the stock market and then with worries about inflation, many people are wondering what they should be doing with their money and where they should be investing. It. The first point that I want to make absolutely clear is if you want to get an indication of which direction the market's going to move up or down, then you want to pay attention to the Fed and what they're doing with interest rates. Right now, the Fed is working to fight inflation and the way that they're doing that is through raising interest rates which makes borrowing money more expensive and so they're essentially pulling cash out of the economic system and as they pull cash out of the system that pushes asset prices lower making it more difficult for businesses to operate pushing markets lower however if the Fed changes their fight in inflation because they're now worried about the economy because up until now the Fed has said time and time again that the reason that the only reason why that they're willing to fight inflation by raising interest rates is because our economy is so robust because our economy is so strong and the Fed has said that they're not worried about a recession however if the Fed changes course because now they're worried about a recession more than they're worried about inflation, well, that could change the dynamics of everything. Because if the Fed changes course and they start cutting interest rates while we're facing this high inflation problem, that could push asset prices through the roof even higher because that means they would start stimulating an already a stimulated and inflated market. So if the Fed starts to cut interest rates because they're worried about a recession, that would change the dynamics of the markets and that could crash asset prices upwards not downwards. Typically, when you think of an asset crashing, you think of asset prices going lower. But if the Fed starts stimulating, they start quantitative easing, they start cutting interest rates when you have high inflation and when the economy is slowing, that could push asset prices higher because they would devalue the currency and that could lead to even bigger problems because that could make the inflation problem even worse. It could devalue the currency even more and that could make the next potential economic crisis even worse. So if the Fed starts stimulating, it when you're already stimulated when the economy is slowing that would cause a lot of potential issues in the economy and that's something you want to pay attention to and on the other side if the fed stays true to their fight on inflation even when the economy is slowing down and they continue to raise interest rates they stick true on their fight to fight inflation well, that could push asset prices even lower because it makes borrowing money more expensive, makes it more difficult to operate businesses, makes it more expensive to buy homes, and that would push asset prices lower. So while most people would assume that a recession would cause asset prices to crash, the real thing that you want to pay attention to is what the Fed will do because if you hit a recession and then the Fed starts stimulating, well, now you could see a crisis more of a currency than of just asset prices. That being said, what I want to do today is go over seven places where you can invest your money through this economic uncertainty. That way then you can work to build your wealth and have your assets help pay for your lifestyle because at the end of the day, that's what wealth is when your assets pay for your liabilities. So what I want to go over today is talk about seven places where you can invest your money, where you find opportunity. And let me start with number one, talking about investing your money in value companies. The way you invest in value companies is by investing your money in the stock market and now you can look at investing in individual companies or you can invest in ETFs. A couple examples of this would be investing in the S&P 500 ETF, something like VOO or something like SPY, SPY. I personally invest my own money into VOO. You can pick whatever one you want and of course I'm not telling you what to invest in. Make sure you do your own due diligence because I'm just a random guy on YouTube. But what I'm talking about here is investing your money into the value companies which are the bigger, more foundational companies, the companies that have bigger profits that have been around for a long time because these are the companies. If we go into a severe economic recession or even a depression, these are the companies that are more likely to survive because they've been around a long time, they have more cash, they have access to more capital, and so hopefully they will be able to survive a bigger downturn. The reason why I mentioned the S&P 500 ETF because that is an index, a group of the 500 biggest companies on the stock market. So if you don't want to spend the time trying to find the best companies to invest in, if you don't want to keep up with their earnings calls, if you don't want to spend all that time doing the research on the companies, then instead of doing all that, you can just invest in an ETF that gives you exposure to the biggest 500 companies. The second place for you to potentially invest your money are into emerging markets. An emerging market is a country not in the United States that is developing. So these are some of your smaller countries or some of your more economically growing countries. And you have the opportunity to invest in these countries through the stock market. Again, you can invest in individual companies or you can invest in ETFs. If you are not willing to put in the time to research a company and then research a country and then research its currency, 
I don't recommend you going out and individually just investing in companies because now you're taking on a whole lot more risk because you're not just investing a company in the United States now, you're investing in a company in a different country that operates on a different currency. So if you don't want to put in all the research, look for emerging market ETFs because that will give you exposure to countries like China and India and Brazil and Korea and Vietnam. A couple examples of this are SCHE and VWO. These are ETFs that I'm invested in. And again, this is giving you exposure to now not just countries, but companies and countries and currencies outside of the United States. One thing that I want to caution here is you can expect a lot of volatility here because we have this national and global debt crisis that the whole world is facing right now. It's causing countries to go into default. We recently saw Sri Lanka declare default on its debts and we have about a dozen other countries according to the World Bank that could potentially default on their national debts because governments around the world had to create so much inflation to help fight this economic slowdown because of the pandemic and plus of other government spending operations that they had. And so because of all of that, you can expect a lot of volatility, a lot of uncertainty and a lot of craziness, not just in our economy here, but in economies around the world and even on bigger scales over there because they're not as stable of economies as the United States. So that means you can expect a lot of craziness, but it does create some opportunity in the form of investment if you're willing to take on some of that risk because there is going to be risk companies will go bust as some of these currencies go bankrupt, as some of the countries go bankrupt. And so these are the things that you have to pay attention to. So understand that there's a lot of risk, but it does come with a different type of upside because now you're not just investing your money in the United States. It's a way for you to hedge also what's going on here in the United States because you're also investing in different currencies and economies. The third place where you'll be able to find opportunity is in the crypto market. Now you don't have to look very far to see the cryptocurrency has been hit very hard and you've seen some of the not so good coins already get on the verge of being completely wiped out. And I don't think that is done yet. We're going to see more scams in cryptocurrency. We're going to see more coins get wiped out. We're going to see more coins go bust. And this is where, again, it can create opportunity when you're looking in the right places. If you believe in the cryptocurrency technology, if you believe in the blockchain technology, this can create an investing opportunity for you if you find a good fundamental investment. Now, of course, you have to believe in the investment. If you don't believe in cryptocurrency, don't just blindly throw your money in there. You have to first believe in it, and then you have to find the good assets. You don't want to just throw your money into meme coins because because you hope that it's gonna have a meteoric rise. This is where fundamentals matter, especially when things start to go down because now smart money starts to come out and all the dumb money starts to go away. The saying is that when the tide starts to go out, that's when you see who has been swimming naked. Well, when times are good and money is plentiful, well then people can make money with dumb money decisions. But when money starts to become tighter, and you start to see some of the free money starting to go away, well, that's when the smart money really starts to come out, and this is where you wanna find a good opportunity. So, if you believe in crypto, you believe in the technology of blockchain, and you wanna look for good opportunities, well, this can create opportunity for you with everything else going on in the economy, the world, and the cryptocurrency market, but again, you have to be willing to withstand volatility. And if you are looking for an easy way to buy and sell cryptocurrency, you can check out our sponsor FTX US because FTX US makes it super simple, not only for you to buy and sell crypto, but they also have a dollar cost average system, which makes it super simple for you to set up a reoccurring buy for whatever cryptocurrency you want. So if you want to keep buying Bitcoin and instead of just trying to buy the dip or buy whatever price you want, what you can do is set it up. So now you buy every week or you buy every day or every two weeks. So you want to enter it Bitcoin, then you can pick the frequency. Whether you want to buy it every day, every two weeks, or every month, you enter it in, and then it will automatically make that purchase for you. Personally, I'm buying my cryptocurrencies every single day. I buy a little bit of Bitcoin, I buy a little bit of Ethereum, and a couple other coins, but that's it. I buy mainly the major coins, and I set it up on a dollar cost average system, so I don't care if the market's going up or down, I'm buying a little bit every single day. And the cool thing about FTX is that now they're launching a feature which will also let you trade stocks right on their app, so now you can trade stocks, you can trade crypto and you can also trade nfts and the best part of all is that when you sign up for ftx using my link down in the description below and then you enter in the referral code minority you can win up to a hundred dollars worth of crypto and then anytime you trade ten dollars or more they will also give you a free coin so if you want to learn more and sign up for ftx and start trading crypto stocks or nfts i'll put the link to how you can do it down in the description Below. The fourth place where you can consider investing in money is in some physical gold. So I look at gold like real money, like hard money. 
I buy gold in a passive strategy where every month I buy a little bit more of gold. Again, just like with a lot of my other passive investments, I don't care what happens in the day-to-day -day price of gold, whether it goes up or down, I'm just buying a little bit more every single month as another place of saving hard money. Because if I had $50,000 worth of cash or $50,000 worth of gold today and I buried it in my backyard in 10 years, which one's gonna be worth more? Well, I think the gold is gonna have more buying power in 10 years than the cash will because our cash is losing value every single day. And as our cash loses value, the value of gold or the price of gold relative to the cash goes up. So as the value of the dollar goes down relative to gold, the price of gold goes up. So gold is more of a store of value. Our cash is a currency, a way to buy and sell things. I'm not a speculator, I'm an investor. And gold is more of an insurance than anything else. But the point that I wanna really emphasize here is if we continue going down an economic slowdown and the Fed changes course where we are facing high inflation and then the Fed wants to fight the slowdown in the economy with cutting interest rates by stimulating the economy that would create significantly more inflation that would hurt the value of the dollar and in theory that should also cause the price of gold relative to the dollar to go up so just one thing to pay attention to that gold is an alternative way for you to save your money as opposed to just storing cash but it also does have its own risks because gold is volatile however it's an alternative and a way for you to save hard money so if you have some extra cash sitting around and you want to find a way to save it in an alternative way gold is one potential option for you the fifth area where you'll be able to find opportunity is in the tech sector because tech is going to be hit especially hard in this economic times because this tech sector has seen a lot of growth through the help of cheap money over the last number of years you've seen a growth of of companies through Silicon Valley and even the East Coast where companies have been getting insane valuations because investors have had a lot of cash, venture capital companies and institutions were able to borrow money super cheap and they just needed a place to put it. So they were willing to invest this money into startups that were not generating much money or any money and they were willing to throw money because they would hope that these startups would one day become profitable. Well, now the interest rates are going up and now that the economy is starting to slow down, the venture capital firms and the institutions that were investing in these companies are saying, well, we can't just keep throwing cheap money into you. We need to see a profit, we need to see a return. And if these companies don't have the ability to churn a profit because they've been selling their products at a loss for so long to grow the user base and people don't actually want the product, well, that's when you run into issues. That's where tech companies across the board right now have been getting smacked because valuations have been dropping. People are realizing that the valuations on tons of these tech companies were just so insanely high, it never made any sense. So we've been seeing the valuations drop. We've been seeing hiring freezes across the tech sector. We've even been seeing a lot of layoffs. So what does that mean? Well, that means the tech sector is gonna get hit extremely hard. The good companies and the bad companies are gonna get hit. The bad companies, some of them are gonna go away. However, the good companies are also gonna get hurt because of everything going on with the bad companies because people are gonna get scared. So it creates opportunity if you can find some of these good companies. Now the question is, how do you find these good companies? Of course, you can do your own research. You can do that sort of fundamental analysis. But if you don't wanna invest the time to do all that, you could potentially consider investing some of your money into tech heavy ETFs, one of which is QQQ. QQQ invests in the NASDAQ and the NASDAQ is primarily comprised of tech companies. And so if tech continues to get smacked, this could create an opportunity for you. But just understand, again, like with everything else, it comes with a lot of risk because if the economy continues to go down, if the Fed continues to raise interest rates, well, that's gonna hurt tech companies, especially when they haven't been profitable or when they need cheap debt and high valuations in order to grow. So it creates opportunity if you're willing to invest for the long term. And again, this is where also your investing strategy plays a big part because if you're just dollar cost averaging and you're just buying shares over time, that way, if the markets continue to go down, you don't try to time the market, you're just averaging your shares that creates opportunity for you. But again, you gotta understand the risk. I know I've said this a thousand times, I'm gonna keep saying this because, well, I'm an attorney and I gotta make sure I protect my interest, but also for you, that way you understand that there is risk associated with this and you wanna understand that if you wanna really make money, it comes to being an investor for the long term, you have to have the patience and understand and believe in what it is that you're investing in. The sixth place where you can see opportunity is in the real estate market. And this one is very interesting because this one is extremely dependent on what the Fed does. Now, I'm gonna reiterate this one more time because if the Fed 
continues to raise interest rates. It is going to make real estate significantly more expensive. And if real estate housing prices become significantly more expensive, you're going to see a smaller demand from people wanting to buy homes. If you have less demand for people wanting to buy homes, that could ultimately push home prices lower. If that happens, well, then that could cause a real estate correction. And depending on everything else going on in the economy and with inflation, that could potentially trigger a real estate crash. Now, we don't have the same factors today as we did before the 2008 crash. However, we have much more economic and much more inflationary issues today than we did before the 2008 crash. So these are the things that you want to pay attention to. And this is where especially you want to pay attention to what the Fed does, because if we continue to raise interest rates, real estate will get hit hard because home prices have gone up so significantly. And now with rising mortgage rates, it's making it very expensive for people to buy a home. But if the Fed changes course, and then they start cutting interest rates that could push home prices up even more significantly because then people are going to say, oh yeah, I can go out and get a mortgage at two and a half percent again. I don't want to miss this opportunity. And then you can see a whole new flood of buyers into the market, pushing home prices up even more. So that's what you want to pay attention to, which is why you have to pay attention to what the Fed does. By the way, this is what we're covering in Market Briefs, my financial newsletter every single day. So if you want to join Market Briefs, it's free. You can just go to marketbriefs.com and you can subscribe to my free newsletter. And the seventh place we can consider investing your money is in startups because it is much more accessible for regular people, non-accredited investors to invest in startups now because of new regulations which allow non-accredited investors to invest in startups. So now you can invest through crowdfunding platforms, the major three are WeFunder, Republic, and Start Engine. I am an investor in WeFunder, by the way, but you can invest in companies on these platforms that are in that startup stage. Now, I like this because I like entrepreneurs. However, I do want to say that this comes with its own fair share of risk because, well, a startup has a much higher chance of going bankrupt than a company that's more established and that has billions of dollars worth of profits. A startup might only have an idea. They might just have their first $100,000 worth of revenue. And so they're just trying to get off the ground. But if you can find a company, in its early stages before it becomes very big, it can create a very lucrative opportunity. Now, at this point, you might be thinking, but just breathe. why in the world would I want to invest in a startup if we're worried about a recession or even a depression? How can a startup thrive? And this is where I do want to say that some of the most well-known companies today were created during recessions. Microsoft, Apple, Airbnb, Uber, Instagram, WhatsApp, all of these companies were created during a recession. So recessions do create environments for startups to thrive. However, it does come with its own fair share of risk. So if you like that idea of investing in startups, it comes with higher risk, but it also comes with higher potential returns. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see the best way that you can invest $5,000 right now in this economy, I made a video covering it and you can watch that video by clicking this button right over there. Thank you for watching and as always, keep hustling. Where should you be investing your money? The stock market has been having huge swings up and down. The cryptocurrency market has 